Montana State Liquor Laws Continued. Information to be covered in this module. Number one, compliance with laws and rules. Number two, sell of liquor at less than posted price is unlawful. Number three, refilling of liquor bottles is unlawful. Number four, sales, service, and consumption of alcohol. Number five, where you can serve, sell, and store alcoholic beverages. Number six, hours of service. Number seven, promotions. Number eight, cost. Number nine, what you can sell. Number 10, who you can buy from. Number 11, change of hours, location, premises, or ownership. Number 12, concession agreements. Number 13, catering. Number 14, miscellaneous questions. And number 15, required signage. Compliance with laws and rules. Number one, all licensees, their agents, and employees must conduct the licensed premises in compliance with the rules of other state and local agencies and abide by all. A. Provisions of the laws of Montana and the United States related to alcoholic beverages. B. County and city or town ordinances related to alcoholic beverages. C. Indian liquor laws applicable within the areas of Indian country as defined by 18 U.S.C. 1151, provided a tribe having jurisdiction over such area of Indian country adopted an ordinance certified by the Secretary of the Interior and published in the Federal Register and D. Rules of the Department relating to alcoholic beverages. 2. Proof of violation by a licensee or the licensee's agent or employee if any of the provisions of the above laws, ordinances, or rules is sufficient grounds for revocation or suspension of the license and licensees may be reprimanded or assessed a civil penalty in accordance with 16-4-406 MCA. Number three, the department will impose progressive penalties for multiple violations of any laws, ordinances, and rules within any three-year period unless mitigating circumstances indicate the penalty should be reduced or aggravating circumstances indicate the penalty should be increased. Violations and progressive penalties include but are not limited to those posted on the following chart. Any combination of four of the violations listed below occurring within a three-year period could result in a license revocation action. The first offense has its monetary penalty, the second offense the monetary penalty, the third offense, if you're not getting a buy now, you have a monetary penalty as well as an administrative penalty. And the fourth offense, of course, you have lost your license to serve or sell alcohol. Farther down, you'll see the penalties for a licensee or employee without valid alcohol sales and service training certificate, an undisclosed ownership interest, or the 90-day non-use without approval. Take a few minutes to study these. Number four, the department will not consider reinstatement of revoked license for one year from the date of revocation. In every case, reinstatement will only be followed if A, the licensee demonstrates to the department that the licensee has taken steps to ensure the causes of the license revocation will be prevented from occurring in the future and B, a license is still available under the quota. Number five, a revoked license will affect a license quota area and the following may result in A, if it causes the area to be under quota, a notice of availability of a license will be published in the newspaper of general circulation in the quota area and invite applications for the available license or B. If the area is over quota, the revoked license will cease to be available for issuance. Number six, 
a revoked beer or beer and wine license issued within a city quota area before October 1997, if reinstated, will not allow any gaming or gambling activity on the licensed premises. A penalty for a licensee or licensee's employees not having a valid alcohol server training certificate shall be assessed against the licensee for whom the employee works at the time of the violation. The penalty for this violation is imposed against the licensee, and the licensee having multiple untrained employees on a particular date shall not be considered multiple violations. However, continued non-compliance on a future date may be considered as an additional violation of the server training requirement. The penalty shall be assessed in addition to any penalty and or other Montana Alcoholic Beverage Code violations such as sales to underage persons and or sales to intoxicated persons, and the violation will be considered a separate violation by the department. Penalties for not having valid alcohol server training certificates may be taken into account based on the mitigating factors described in 8 when determining a licensee's total number of violations in a three-year period for purposes of the progressive penalty schedule seen in 6. However, the monetary penalty for each server training certificate violation shall be $50 for a first offense, $200 for a second offense, and $450 for a third offense in a three-year period. Example. If a licensee has one previous violation for sale after hours and later violates the training certificate provision, the licensee will be penalized $50 for the training certificate violation, although the citation will be considered a second violation on the licensing's record. Then, if the licensee commits another violation within the same three-year period, for instance, a sale to an underage person, the penalty for that violation will be a third violation penalty. Number eight. Mitigating circumstances with regard to Title 16, Chapter 4, Part 10, MCA are considered as follows. A. The mitigating circumstances provisions of 16-4-1008 MCA apply only to violations of Title 16, Chapter 4, Part 10, MCA and not to other violations. B. Neither cost nor convenience of training shall be considered by the department to excuse any licensee from compliance with the requirements of Title 16, Chapter 4, Part 10, MCA, and these rules. C. Any violation of 16-4-1005 MCA occurring prior to April 1, 2012 will not be taken into account in determining the licensee's number of violations in a three-year period. D. In the department's discretion, a violation of 16-4-1005 MCA occurring on or after April 1, 2012 may not be taken into account in determining the licensee's number of violations in a three-year period if all managers and supervisors of persons who serve or sell alcoholic beverages meet the training requirements, the licensee demonstrates to the department's satisfaction that its business policies and practices reflect substantial compliance with the server training requirements such that it is apparent that the violation was a result of an oversight or mistake and the licensee has committed no previous violations of 16-4-1005 MCA. Mitigating circumstances in the case of sale to an underage person could result in a reprimand for the first offense under Title 16 MCA within the most current three-year period if the licensee has provided alcoholic beverage service training acceptable to the department to all of its employees and reinforces that training with each employee at least every two years. The licensee must demonstrate that the person who made the sale to a minor has completed alcoholic beverage service training prior to the department considering the issuance of a reprimand. A written reprimand will be considered a first offense for the application of the progressive penalty schedule only if the licensee commits the same offense again within one year. The written reprimand in lieu of a violation shall be available only one time per licensee. Number 10. Aggravating circumstances may result in the imposition of maximum monetary penalties, maximum suspension time or revocation, and will not bind the department to the progressive penalty framework indicated in 3. Number 11. Aggravating circumstances included but are not limited to A. No effort on the part of a licensee to prevent a violation from occurring. B. A licensee's failure to report a violation at the time of renewal. C. A licensee ignoring warnings issued by a regulating authority about compliance problems. And D. Recurring sales to underage persons or sales to intoxicated persons. E. 
a licensee's failure to timely respond to requests during the investigation of a violation and F, a violation's significant negative effect on the health and welfare of the community in which the licensee operates. Number 12, if the violation discovered is an undisclosed ownership interest, the department will consider aggravating circumstances described in number 10 and mitigating circumstances such as voluntary disclosure of relevant acts in determining the appropriate penalty. Number 13, nothing in this rule prevents the department from revoking, suspending, or refusing the renewal of a license if revocation, suspension, or refusing renewal are expressly allowed in law or rule with reference to a prohibited act.